All right, we are now recording. So um, that way what we'll do is upon the uh, conclusion of this, we'll download the, the recording and be able to share it out in our Friday Flash and in other channels and be able to do that. So, um, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. I will continue to admit folks here to the meeting as they enter. Um, all right, well, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and today is of course, Tuesday, September 13th. Um, we will be doing these once a month, as I stated, um, and I look forward to seeing everybody when we can. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with prayer. So if you'll please join me in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we are blessed with a community of supportive families who gather with the purpose of providing the best teaching and learning environment for our learners and teachers. We offer you thanks for a harmonious parish and school relationship that allows us to lead and learn with faith. Be with us during this brief gathering and provide us with energy throughout your day. We pray in your name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right, more people joining us here. So let me admit them. All righty. Again, these meetings, typically, uh, the virtual ones are going to run less than 30 minutes. They're quick, just quick conversation. Um, and we'll check in to see how everybody's doing and let you give us some updates on things at the school. Um, and then the in-person ones will, you know, sort of have a little bit more time to socialize and, and be a community in that way. So here are some of the topics we're going to discuss. These are our standard sort of agenda items that we, that we roll through. Um, so we'll touch on each one of these here this morning. So last week, last Wednesday, well, let me back up to the very beginning. The, the very first week was not a school mass day. Um, and what we did was we actually did a prayer service. It was led by uh, Jeannie Slifka, who um, organized the prayer service. And she worked in conjunction with her religion classes, um, as well as Michael Hicks, who's our new language arts teacher. He's actually serving in an assistant role with the religious coordinator this year. Um, and in that uh, prayer service, Michael Hicks delivered a message. You can see that on one of our blog pages on the website. Um, it's just the text that he had written. It's a wonderful message that he delivered on that day um, that I, I encourage you to go to our webpage and, and read that. Um, so that was our that was our prayer service where the, the students sort of got reacclimated with uh, a whole school mass in person um, and, and where they're going to sit and how to how to behave. And they were perfect. It was great. Um, it all went well there. So, so that went well. Then we took a week off from mass the following week and we did some classroom activities. Um, and then last week we had our very first uh, in-person mass with Father, Ren Father Renegar. Um, at that point, we had our grades seven and one join as a um, uh, mass buddies. They partnered up after mass and now they will be moving forward as mass buddies in that day. We will continue to add mass buddies, um, you know, six, five, all the way through. And we'll have these mass buddies throughout the year. Um, and for those like eighth grade and JK, who JK doesn't attend mass and eighth grade has their own space where they do their thing, they will be assigned prayer partners. So those who don't have a mass buddy will get a prayer partner. And when we do special um, activities around some of the uh, holidays, then we'll get them together and be able to partner up in those ways. So look forward to that mentorship relationship that the older kids can provide to the younger ones um, throughout the year. Also, this year, uh, pre-COVID, we took a collection every week, um, and that collection was in support of the uh, sister parish um, in Haiti. And so, um, one of the one of the things we're super excited to bring back is uh, the the collection every week. So we collected last week, and we'll continue to collect every week. It's just passing the basket, just like mass on Sundays. We won't have a second collection. We just have the first collection, and whatever your kids can 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 give is great. Um, if not, fine too. All right, here are some things that are happening in school that impact our students and families. Um, one thing is MAP testing is complete. Um, this is new this year. Uh, we've, as you remember, we've done um, Scantron testing in the past. Um, it was uh, performance series tests by the company Scantron. Scantron has since ended that program and we have picked up with MAP testing. MAP is great for us because it's a national test that a lot of people take. Um, it allows us to give comparative data, which is a wonderful thing. Um, and one of our parent surveys under the question was, how do my kids, how do our kids, you know, compare it to others um, and, and other schools, other Catholic schools, other local schools? Um, so that'll help give us, give us some of that data. But also, 
when we look at admissions and that kind of thing, there are some tests that the kids take in other places that we can look at and see how they how it aligns with us. Um, so that's completed today is actually a makeup day for kids who were absent or didn't finish. They are working on that today. Um, Thursday, Thursday is an exciting day for us because on Thursday we will have the we will host the high school information fair. This is something we initiated here at St. Mary's many years ago, six, seven years ago. Um, and uh, we uh, continue to host it. It's like the place to go if you wanna learn about high schools all in one place. Um, so that is on Thursday evening. It's gonna be in the upper commons. We would use the gym, but it's not ready just yet. And we'll talk about that here shortly. Um, and what we'll do is we will, we will, um, be in the uh, will be in the upper commons that day. There will be representatives from private schools, from boarding schools, private schools, and public schools should be there. Um, Henrico, I'm not sure about their attendance yet. They were they were sort of trying to figure out if they could get a representative here in time for that. Um, but um, we do know that we'll have uh, many many like 25, 26 different representatives from the various schools. It's just a good place to go to sort of ask questions. There are actually high school students, current high school students who will come and attend and they speak about their experience and share information. So um, it's a good place for kids to talk to other kids and other adults about, about the school. Um, this Friday is Constitution Day, yet another St. Mary's tradition. Uh, we do celebrate Constitution Day here. Paul Daly, our social studies teacher, will be leading that effort. Um, that's Friday. The weather looks amazing, so Friday we'll gather, Friday morning, like eight-ish, eight or so, we'll gather outside on the back parking lot by the middle school doors, um, and at that point, that's where we will sing some songs, we'll have some prayer, we'll have a reflection, do the Pledge of Allegiance, dress in our red, white, and blue for that day, um, and the SCA came up with the idea, well, let's create a flag, like a physical flag based on the outfit, the clothing we're wearing, so that's why we've asked for ECDC to wear blue, elementary to wear red, and middle school to wear white. Um, it'll be our first go at the flag making, uh, so we'll see how it goes, but the event itself, not our first go around. It's a tradition that we do every year, and uh, we're looking forward to that. I'll speak a little bit more later about this, but also to tag onto that, just to remember there is the PTO coffee, or the PTO coffee on the playground. Um, that's, that's a fun time for adults to come together, even with their little ones, the ones who don't attend St. Mary's, um, to come and gather together and have some coffee before you join us on on the back parking lot. So one thing I will ask though, once you leave the coffee on the playground and you go to the event, that you would join your child in the class if that's where you would like to be with your child. We don't want the child leaving the class to join you. Um, so either stand by yourself and the adults or go join your child in the class. Either way is fine, but we don't want to pull the child from the class. Um, we just want to keep the order in that way. Thank you for adhering to that. All right, looking at some new faculty and staff. Um, super blessed this year. Uh, we've been able to um, secure some of those positions that we lost last year. Um, and uh, we, it's due to retirement, some moving, some other circumstances. But you know, we, we now have our new assistant principal, Amanda Esparza, who jumped in from uh, Benedictine Schools of Richmond, jumped in and hit the ground running, has made a great impact here already. Um, one bit of information that's new to most everybody is uh, Cinnamon Langley. She's our school counselor whom we get through Commonwealth Catholic Charities. She has been promoted. So when you get good people and they do good things, they move on. So Cinnamon will be actually uh, supervising uh, school counselors through Ca Ca Commonwealth Catholic Charities. Um, we are going to, we are lucky to get Anna. Anna Borelli will be joining us. Anna actually spent some time here last year with Cinnamon uh, working with our students as um, doing some intern work in that way, but um, she is she is licensed, ready to go, and eager. She's super excited and really, really wanted to be at St. Mary's, so I'm excited for that. Um, also, we do have a new uh, speech therapist here, Megan Jackson, Jackson, um, and th those are contracted through a different company, but also they will um, they work here out of our school, so it makes it a little more convenient for parents who um, need to juggle the uh, speech therapy situation. Um, we actually offer that here at school. So Beth Murray is your contact for that. If there's anything that you think that um, we could help uh, with that, if you want to talk, contact Beth Murray, she would be your contact. All right, so middle school French and ASC updates. Um, we actually have interviewed more French teachers. For those who don't know, um, we've got Miss Hartgrove. She is uh, actually a hired assistant this year who has French background. 
She's a, a, a teacher. She's a, a studied and licensed teacher in music. Um, excellent instructional strategies. Been doing an amazing job with the kids. Also has had minor in French. Spent time in France, so she's a perfect fit for this interim time. So she's been stepping in and doing a fantastic job. Um, and um, in some of the observations in the classroom, I've seen the, the rapport and the interaction has been great. Um, and so um, she's been holding down the fort all this time and doing a great job with it. We have conducted the interviews and we're getting to the end of those and um, looking forward to, to going forward with our permanent French teacher here soon. Also, speaking of doing good things, uh, Melissa Martinez, she's been our ASC director for the last year. She just recently received, got a job in the field in which she had studied. So um, she finished her degree in like the COVID era. There weren't jobs available for her at the time. She joined us, has done a fantastic job of building the program. She's been leading with some great calm demeanor, uh, organizing the, the ASC program, um, and we'll miss her a ton. Um, but what we've done is now we have promoted Heather Blythe to the director position, um, and we actually have a new uh, uh, after school care uh, assistant starting on Monday. So we're keeping the program running. It's good. We can always use another assistant in the in the classroom. So if you if you know of anyone or you yourself are interested, by all means, let me know, and we can uh, continue to fill that role. All right, let's talk renovation. Um, you know, I messaged out that we're going to do uh, uh, mid-September is when we hopefully be there. So here we are, about mid-September, um, and we're getting close, very close. Uh, what you see there is that image of the gym floor. Um, that floor that you see there, the actual floor is here. It's in the gym. It's not laid out. It's not flat. It's been sitting in the gym. It's been acclimating. So anytime you've laid a floor in your house, you know, it's got to sit for 72 hours or whatever that time may be. Um, so the stage flooring is in here, the gym flooring is in here, and we've been conditioning the room to make sure that the, all the materials sort of uh, acclimate properly before installing them. So they're currently clearing the floor, cleaning it, sanding it, prepping it, so they can roll it out, roll out the new floor on, in the gym. Um, those other spaces, the storage and the PE office, et cetera, those are pretty much done. They're about, I would say 90% complete. They've got the drop ceilings in, they've got to put the lights, the lights are in, um, just a lot of finishing touches in those spaces. So that's exciting for us um, to be able to get back most of our gym. The kitchen and the courtyard and the new meeting room, those are, those are still under construction, basically. Um, we knew this. We knew that the kitchen would be delayed many uh, times over just based on uh, the uh, availability of, of appliances and materials, et cetera, particularly the metal and the wood that we've been having to, to secure. Um, but those, those are coming along as planned. So it's not, I'm not feeling like we're behind on those. Um, and uh, my hope is that in about two weeks, we'll be able to be in the gym uh, in, in some capacity. So that's exciting for us, exciting for our PE teacher, I know. Um, and we'll be able to be back in there um, and doing some exciting things. Be on the lookout though, for some uh, information regarding sort of a, an open house or a visitation or some way in which you all can come in and, and see the, the unveiling of that. Um, I would love to do a grand opening with all of the spaces, but I think I think we'll have to do some sort of staggered event where we do a gym and then we do a courtyard and then maybe we have a big old feast one day where we use the kitchen to cook, eat in all of those spaces. Um, so be looking forward, look be on the lookout for that. And I am looking forward to it as well. So you as a parent um, or a volunteer, you can uh, basically, um, you can volunteer here. That's a beautiful thing about St. Mary's Catholic School. We really would love for you guys to, to volunteer and enjoy, enjoy uh, your time and, um, and your efforts to support our school and our mission. Um, so, but to be a volunteer, like if you're gonna drive a car with kids on a field trip, if you're gonna chaperone a field trip with a group of students, um, if you're gonna be in alone, alone in a class ever, you have to take a Virtus training class. And that Virtus training is required um, for you to be able to volunteer. And what's, what's frustrating for us and for you is, you know, we get up to a week before the event, you say you wanna volunteer, I'll drive, I can go now, and you're super excited, you've told your kids, you say you're driving, and then we say you can't because you need to be Virtus trained. Um, so it's important, even if you're not sure that you're on the books to volunteer, to go ahead and get that taken care of, so you're set. It's a, it's a brief class, it's short, um, and then you just keep up with your bulletins. You get a monthly email that you have to read and answer a question. You just keep current on those things. Um, and it's just basically about safety and protecting children and doing what's right in the Catholic church and school. So um, it's, it's, um, it's an important step that you, we have to take and we want you to take. 
And um, by doing so, it allows you the opportunity to volunteer whenever you wish. So, so I would encourage you, as you see here, there is, um, you can look in the flash and you can sign up by emailing Heather Heishman. She's in the church office um, and she'll be running this class. So um, I encourage you to do that if you have any interest in, in volunteering here. All right, here we go, some upcoming events. So a lot of things are happening here. Um, so one thing I've already touched on it is this Friday. So Friday, it's a free tag day for the kids. I talked about the different colors, the different grades are gonna be wearing. Um, and then of course, there will be coffee and donuts. Um, and that's gonna be on the playground. Um, and so that starts around 7.45. Now I want you to hear me out on how this works, right? So um, if you're doing front carpool, I would do front carpool, drop your child, and then you can loop around and park in the back. If you're doing back carpool, do your normal drop, drop your child, as you always do, but then just keep circling left in the parking lot and then park up close to the playground. Um, so go up there and park. Please don't get out of the car and then walk your child across the parking lot. Um, let's just get them in their normal routine. Then you can drop them, you're alone. You can then go up to the playground for the coffee and donuts. That's the best way to handle this, I think. Um, so if you would please follow that. And then we'll come outside about eight, eight o five. And that's where we'll do our announcements and everything out there. So we look forward to you joining us on that day. This should be a nice morning. So the 5K, that's every year. It's the Go Forth 5K. We do this every year and um, super excited for October 1st. That's the day that we'll be doing it at Deep Run Park. Um, it's a great community event. It's outside. It's in the morning. Um, the weather should be beautiful on an October morning like that. Um, and so I look forward to everyone registering for that. That helps to support you know, some of the building fund that we're doing and everything else here, but not only just a financial support, but it's it's the support of the community and what we do together. Um, and so the kids love coming out and seeing their classmates there. I recognize there's, you know, club soccer and everything going else going on in those days. Um, but if you're able to join us, I really encourage you to. Um, that's a great, a great way to join us. And you can find that information on our website where you can sign up and register. I have signed up. I've registered. I'll be there. Um, also, next Wednesday, we, we're hosting uh, what is a special packet pickup that day. So you can pick up your packet. For those who've already registered, you can pick up your packet there. Um, and you can hear the speaker, Jennifer Far Davis. Um, as a Appalachian Trail hiker myself at one point, uh, I am impressed by what uh, she has accomplished. So I look forward to hearing her motivational message on that evening. Um, you can come do that. And then what's happening super early this year is the book fair. All right. So that's going to be super early. Um, we usually do it a little bit later in the year, but this was the week available to us through Scholastic. So we will be doing this September 26th. Mrs. Lavallee, who runs an amazing program in our library, she will be um, fully communicative on what's, uh, what's going to happen and how you're able to pay for it and um, adding funds to, a, to an account for your child to buy books, etc. So be on the lookout for that. You know, there'll be an e-wallet, everything like that. So um, be on the lookout for book fair info. All right, uh, here we go. We're gonna talk about some community questions. Um, uh, the, the ability to um, uh, submit questions in advance is super helpful to me um, because then you, you submit your questions and then I read them and then I provide the answer for you. Um, I will touch on all of the questions that were asked um, and then um, hopefully that'll, that'll uh, answer your questions. All right, so the one question that came up was, were exit interviews conducted with all the teachers who left St. Mary's last year, and what were the results of that? So yeah, uh, exit interviews were had taken place. We last year one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. We seven people left St. Mary's last year. Three, uh, four of which retired. Um, so that leaves three. Um, another one um, was um, was able to go ahead and and be, go back to being a mom for uh, for the day job. Um, and then others had other opportunities that they left. And in every one of those exit interviews, um, it was spoken about how the um, how wonderful uh, wonderful their experience was at St. Mary's. Um, and um, the only the only thing that I guess came out as maybe a, a reason for leaving was uh, money. That would probably be the only reason. Maybe a higher salary somewhere else. Um, and for those who aren't privy to this, Catholic schools don't pay as much as a uh, public school. So someone who has a greater financial need um, says, looks at a job opportunity that pays a lot more than what they're able to do here. 
Um, and so they take that opportunity and go. Um, so not being able to match a, a salary increase of that much, that was why some, uh, in some cases this happened. But for the most part, it was retirement, ability to stay home, um, or a financial reason. So um, those were the answers to that, but everything else came out as a positive experience. So, um, so I, I hope that answered that question. Um, next question that came up was that when their kids were in Henrico County Public Schools, that the parents were polled on um, and be able to give their opinion on calendar preferences and how the calendar works. And they wanted to know how they could be involved in this process as well. So our calendar is um, set by the diocese from like start and end and then the major holidays, as well as those days off at the end of each quarter. So that's set by the diocese. We work within those calendars to provide half days and early release days. On those early release days, we look at things like our um, faith formation as a staff. So we dismiss at 1.30 some days and then our staff come together and we do our faith formation together then. That gives us an opportunity to start earlier, like two o'clock and go until five. Um, on that. So that's how we sort of work those days. And in other cases, we will pair it with a, a long weekend. So that gives parents, if we know we're off Monday, well, let's get out 1.30 on, on Friday. That allows parents to hit the road early if they want to for a long weekend. Because to be honest, we're going to lose you anyway. So if we can get you out at 1.30, um, then we're, we're good for the cause. Um, so the other part was, how can I be involved? Well, it's the calendar is created. Those dates are created by a team of uh, school leaders, but also some parents who are involved with that. Um, and so you can be on the lookout for ways in which you can help contribute to that as well. So, um, and we do, those holidays are sort of centered around our liturgical calendar. Um, so um, we, we are a Catholic school. And so that's sort of why all those holidays fall when they do. So hopefully that answered that question. Um, let's see. Oh, here's, here's one. This is a good question, and it's, it's a hard one to answer, but I'm going to do my best. Um, so basically, a, a parent has uh, three children here, um, and um, on Wednesday, we have our mass day. And on mass day, we wear the formal uniforms. Boys wear long pants. Girls wear the jumper in the, in the elementary and lower. Um, but there are a couple of classes who actually have PE on that day. So they're wearing their PE uniforms. So how does that work? Well, it's a, it's a struggle. I get that. I understand that. Um, so right now we're sticking with the same plan where it's the formal uniform as is what we are going to do. Um, there is a team. It's called my uh, the focus team. Our focus team are teacher leaders. So we have different units. We have the early childhood development center, the elementary, the middle school and the resource teachers. We have a leader from each of those teams. It also includes the assistant principal and myself. We will bring this up um, and we will have this conversation. Um, I get the inequity there with the kids, especially if you have, if they have brothers or sisters who one's in a comfy PE uniform, the other one's in long pants on a 90 degree day. So I understand it, um, but I will take that to the team and we'll discuss it. So I appreciate the question and I'll honor the request. We'll see what we can do. Um, and then the last question that came up. Oh, the question was their new parent here. They, they're enrolled in the pre-K program. And the question was, they wanted to know why um, when enrolling, it was asked for um, parent one and parent two. Um, and so because we want to give the opportunity for each person to include both parents in the, in the naming, so parent one and parent two. Um, and our program is written, it's, a, it's called FACS SIS. FACS SIS is a provider of, um, it's an information system, just like a patient portal in a hospital or a doctor's office or any other place where you might register for something, they ask those basic details, who are the uh, parents in the house. Um, and so we cannot edit that to read anything else. It's, it's the way it's given to us, parent one, parent two. And so therefore that's why it says what it says. Um, and um, it's meant to, it's meant to um, basically accommodate um, all users in that system and that's why it's the way it is. So hopefully that answers the question. All righty. Well, I thank everybody for being here today. Um, are there any other questions that we may be able to, to answer along the way? Hey, Brandon. This is, yes. Can you hear me OK? This is Lynn Maher, Liam and James's mom. Yes, ma'am, I can. I was just curious, is there any talk about um, adjusting the yearbooks to come in again when the kids are in school? I, I, know, I think it was like COVID, maybe it was delayed yep. one year, and then last year we didn't get them till this year. I just wasn't yep. sure if that might go Absolutely. back to like the That's, usual. 
That's ideal and that's the plan. That is correct. Yep. And for the last two years, it's been a situation that's mostly out of our control um, with regard to the publisher. But it's my understanding that we should have them in before you all leave this year. So um, Michael Hicks is our is our new yearbook sponsor this year, and he's he runs a tight ship. And I expect that we'll be in hitting deadlines just just perfectly. But also, um, um, also um, uh, the publisher also is on board with getting that deadline as well. So um, thank you. What, yes, Appreciate yes. that information. That's helpful. Thanks. Yep. One thing I did want to mention: I, it was confirmed that Henrika will be here on Thursday night. Um, as well as the tech centers, the um, specialty, the specialty and tech centers will be here on Thursday night as well. So if you got your site set on Henrico, there will be reps here, which is exciting for us. All right, any other questions? Hey, Brandon, uh, this is Chris Denson, Delina Humphrey's mom. Hi, welcome. Hi, it's good to be here. Um, just, a, I had something came up from the summer readings and I wanted to, to know, um, what, what came up was a, a book that was um, in the summer reading program for fourth grade. And it was a book that, that spoke about um, the mother being an alcoholic um, and not being there for the child and there being issues with the parents in the home. And that was kind of um, a surprise to know that my daughter was going to be reading that or that she read it and then brought it to me to my attention. So I just wanted to know um, how how are the summer readings accumulated in terms of who's who's reviewing them and and right. why are certain summer readings summer readings? Right. So that, that's a good question. And and here I'll answer you. I'll answer that question. Um, so one thing is uh, our teachers work in conjunction with our librarian who has access to to you know. Uh, reviews, et cetera, on those items. Um, and so they work together on that. So that's one thing. Second thing is we're looking at ch actually changing that process where we basically will have a, a required book that's, you know, um, required and then a couple of optional books. So students can choose, parents can help choose that decision. Uh, in some cases, we like to be able to allow uh, students to, to understand um, sort of life around them isn't just, you know, as they see it every single day. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we don't want to push or or cross a line of a family concern. So mm -hmm. um, that question has come up. And going forward, it has been determined that we will have a checklist and we will have options and we will have um, criteria for making sure that those are those are identified properly. Um, prior to this year, there, there's not been a concern with with these books, um, but you're not the first one to make to make a comment about something. So um, so those will be under review, and I appreciate the question. It's very helpful, uh, helpful feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I, I appreciate everybody showing up here today. This has been a very productive meeting, I hope. We did go longer than our, than our regular 15, 20 minute session, but that's great. I love spending time with everybody. Um, and I look forward to, I believe it's October 11th. It's, um, it's going to the second Tuesday of October. Um, we'll be here at the school in the Bishop Sullivan room is where we'll meet on that day. So be on the lookout for that invite. Uh, we'll provide the coffee for you. You just show up and we'll uh, get together then. So, so thank you so much for coming. And I look forward to seeing everybody next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.